Welcome back everybody to another edition of This Week in the XFL. I'm your host as always representing XFL Newsroom, ooh, the number one source in XFL News. And quite honestly, it's been a slow news week, but we do have a little bit of news to talk about. It makes sense, the holidays were here, and we hope everybody had a very Merry Christmas or any other holidays that you celebrate. We also hope you got some sweet XFL swag under that Christmas tree, or maybe even some season tickets. We saw a few people posting on Twitter that they got some XFL gifts, and overall it was exciting. I got my Roughnecks jersey, so I'm feeling excited for the season. February 8th can't come soon enough. We're riding into that new year. But hey, before we get started, I just wanted to remind everybody we have a giveaway going on. You can win two tickets to any XFL game this season. You'll have to find your own way there, but we'll get you the tickets to enjoy the game. All you got to do is like, comment, subscribe, and click the link down in the description for the Discord. Get up to at least a rookie status. It's about 50 or 60 posts. But the good news is, is you'll be able to hang out with a bunch of other like-minded XFL fans just like you and me. But hey, let's get into the news. So last week we spoke about the first trade in XFL history. Well, shortly after that, we saw the second trade in history occur, and it took place between the Tampa Bay Vipers and the Los Angeles Wildcats. So the Wildcats acquired Arion Springs and Tampa Bay received Jalen Collins. Both corners, Jalen Collins played for LSU, picked by the Atlanta Falcons in the second round of the 2015 draft. Collins, he was a three-year starter for the Oregon Ducks uh, in their secondary, telling about 44 pass breakups Got a few interceptions. Overall, I think this is a pretty even trade. You know, some people feel a little bit differently depending on what side you're on. But this is the, these are the things that we're seeing now that the mini camps are over, is looking at your teams and assessing what are the missing pieces. So it's not necessarily that either, either of these players didn't play up to snuff, but the maybe needed something different, at least for the style of play that they're looking for. Overall, it's really exciting to see trades happening already. We spoke about this last week, but you know, overall, we weren't even sure if we were gonna get trades or how that was going to occur, but we're seeing them already and that's exciting. We have the training camp next month here in Houston, where all eight teams are coming and I expect to see a few more trades before that happens and maybe during and after that training camp. But once we get to February, I think we're gonna hit the, round, the ground running. I don't see we're gonna think we're gonna see many trades during the season, but we could be wrong, but it will be exciting to see. Like I've said in the past, this is the most exciting time to be an XFL fan because we really don't know what's gonna happen. The only thing that we know for sure is that this time around, the XFL is much more professional. They're doing things right. They're putting the right people in the right places to make the right decisions. So this is just the first year, but I'm excited to talk about season two, three, and beyond. But we're not even to that first game. We're not even there, but we're almost just a month away, a little over a month away until we all finally get to see what the XFL looks like what it sounds like, what it feels like, what the game style, what those rules, how they're gonna play out. We still don't really even have the official rule book, but Oliver Luck has stated recently that we should be getting them shortly after the holidays. So I would expect maybe after New Year, we're gonna get that rule book probably leading into the mini camps, which kick off January 4th. I know I'm gonna try to attend at least one of each team's training camp out here in Houston. Don't hold me to it, but I'm gonna do my best. Uh, but that, that was just the second trade. We also had the Vipers making a few transactions as well. So they picked up Dante Adai, KJ May, Tavarius McFadden, uh, Farrell McKeever, Jacob Pugh, Rodney Randall, right? So they're they're building up their, their, their crew, right? They're kind of getting these guys in place. I know 
Well, if we listen to This is the XFL podcast, his most recent episode, he talked about the Wildcats and the Vipers. And at least in his opinion, the the Vipers are probably the lowest on the list. And I don't know if I agree with that 100%. Again, we'll have to see. Mark Tressman has kind of a different style of gameplay. I think all of the coaches have a slightly different style of gameplay, which is going to make this season especially exciting for me, right? I think with June Jones here in Houston, Stoops up in Dallas, we're going to see a lot of mixed match play styles, especially when you mix in, you know, Coach Moss in LA and Tressman and Gilbride. There's, there's going to be a lot of different mixes here. We're going to see some weaknesses come out of each of these teams, but this is why we're seeing the transactions. Now, each team is trying to ensure that they have the best possible team when the season kicks off. You know, when we look at the AAF, but really more importantly, the original XFL, one of the things that hurt them was not allowing the players to have enough time to gel together, which is one thing that this new league seems to be solving for. So beyond just the training camp that's coming up, we've had these mini camps and the players and the coaches have had access to each other prior to that to at least discuss you know game plans playbooks things of that nature so overall we're getting to the fun stuff but those weren't the only transactions we also had some up in new york all on the east coast here so they picked up tavon jacobs tio redding dalton Panchilla, brant weiss jordan agaziva charles wright connor strachan and trey mathis so again Filling up those rosters. We've heard that there may be one more supplemental draft coming here in January. And we expect that that would happen probably either before or after those mini camps. But we'll keep you posted as we learn more. So as we spoke about, the season is just right around the corner. And one of the stadiums really isn't even complete yet. So that's Globe Life up in Arlington for the Dallas Renegades. Well, they opened up the stadium this past weekend to fans to kind of get a sneak peek at what the construction is looking like, what the progress is at, and really just to scout out the seats for the upcoming season. So the weather wasn't that great, but the good news is, at least on our part, we have our official XFL newsroom photographer, W. Scott McGill. He headed up to Globe Life to give us a sneak peek at what the stadium is looking like. And you know, he said, there's a lot of work to be done, but it sounds like everything is on track for that week one in February. So we spoke about this maybe a month or two ago. It sounded like that the stadium wasn't gonna be ready for you know February 9th in this instance, that opening Re- Renegades game. But the good news for all Renegades fans, it is going to be open. And again, going to this event, you can see from the images, and we'll have a link down in the description to the article, there is a lot of work to be done, but it is on track, it is going to get done, and the Renegades looks like they're gonna be playing at home week one. Now, one of the things fans have been asking about, or at least wondering about, is that configuration. And we showed that a while ago when they released the renders, but really those were only renders of the field. So it's kind of hard to get a real idea of what, you know, is tangible. And it's those new seats that they're adding to the field. Now I'll tell you firsthand, I bought seats in that section purposely for that reason, for when the Roughnecks head up to Dallas. Uh, But I want to check out those seats. Those to me seem like the most exciting. And they look very nice. And according to McGill, our photographer, he said, those are probably the best seats in the house, right? They're the closest to the field. You're right in the action, which makes me even more excited. Now, I don't want a sidebar here, but since we're talking about Houston and Dallas, or at least that game, because I'm going there, I think it's important to mention that it was revealed at least for Roughneck season ticket holders. And this is official. This came out of the Roughnecks meet and greet straight from Brian Michael Cooper's mouth, team president. He said, if you are a Roughnecks fan, you actually get a sixth ticket in your season ticket package. And that is to head up to Dallas. So if you have season tickets for the Roughnecks 
and you want to go see them play in Dallas, you may want to hold off on buying that ticket because it is going to be included in your season ticket package. Now on the other, on the, on the flip side, it sounds like it's going to be the same for Renegade season ticket holders as well. They will also get a sixth ticket to head down to Houston. Uh, there's even talks or trying to organize different ways to set up a motorcade or a caravan to head up to the game. I don't know if the teams are planning on renting out buses to where you can buy a ticket or if we're all gonna drive in different cars, but that sounds exciting. Um, so the good news, at least for me, is it sounds like I'll have two different places to sit during that Roughnecks Renegades game up in Dallas, and I'll probably check out both seats evenly because I would like to see the different views from all over the stadium. It's the only stadium in the XFL that was a baseball park. Of course, it's not going to be anymore. It's being retrofitted to be a football stadium and a soccer stadium football if you're in Europe, but hey, whatever, we're here in the States. So overall, like I said, it doesn't look like much in the images, but it's close. And even according to the sales guys, like we mentioned, the weather wasn't great, but there was still a good amount of traffic of people coming to check out the stadium. There was a lot of interest and seats and suites are both selling well up in Dallas. So if you are looking for those season tickets or maybe Santa didn't leave them under the tree for you this year, you might, want to, you might want to get on that. I'm not gonna say that they're gonna sell out because I believe they can release more seats, but if you want some good seats, you know, it might be getting to that point where you might want to start picking them up, but that's, that's up to you. I'm not gonna tell you what to do here. So we have another transaction here, and this one's over on the West Coast, the Northwest Coast, if you will. The Seattle Dragons have picked up and signed a new player LSU's former placeholder kicker Cole Tracy has announced via Twitter that he has signed with the league. So, you know, it's not maybe the most exciting name, but I am a fan of kickers. I think kickers are one of the more fun players in the league. They generally have a little bit more personality, if you will. Uh, but, you know, he, he did pretty well for himself. This is another graduate of LSU. And so Tracy set five school records in the one year that he spent at LSU. And he also had some meetings and tryouts with the New Orleans Saints, the Green Bay Packers in the spring. Uh, and But then, you know, as the summer showcase around, came around, he attended over in uh, Tampa Bay and he did some tryouts there. And it seems like now he's signed with the league. I don't believe he was in the draft, but it, I, again, these are the things that make it exciting for me. And this is just me personally. It doesn't need to be a big name. It just needs to be something. Any XFL news is good news in my book. We're right, I can only say, again, I, I am a broken record. We're right around the corner from the season. It's so fun to watch these teams build themselves because next year, sure, there's gonna be some churn. We're probably gonna lose a few guys. Some may go to the NFL, maybe the CFL. Some may just leave altogether but we're not gonna be starting from scratch. We are gonna have folks that are returning. We're gonna have standout stars that a lot of people probably haven't heard of yet. Similar like we did with the AAF, and that is super cool to me. So I know these aren't the most exciting things that we're talking about now, but just give it one more month and we're gonna be making picks. We're gonna be talking about the games, recaps, power rankings, all sorts of cool stuff. But I'm gonna save a lot of that for the end of this video where I'm gonna be doing a channel update. But actually, you know what? I think we are at the end of this video. So it's the end of the year. This is the last episode of this year in the XFL for 2019. The last episode of the decade, even though we've been doing it for about a year, at least the YouTube stuff. We started on YouTube doing the XFL newsroom uh, well, at the time it was XFL 2K, around November, December of 2018. And you know, it's so awesome to me is we're about a year in, we are the most subscribed, most viewed, most listened to website, YouTube channel, and social platform for XFL news. And that is the best present that I could receive this year, right? We're over 1,400 subscribers here on YouTube. We're about 5,600, almost maybe 5,700 on uh, Twitter, 
about the same on Facebook. And thank you so much. You don't know how much that means to me. I know it means a lot to the other folks that have joined the team as well. I don't want to speak for Tron Hawkins, J Dash, XFL Plus, all of the awesome people we've met throughout the year, all the people that have joined our Discord and kind of stuck through it all, right? There hasn't been a lot of news in some of the parts of the years, but we've built a community. You know, even the folks that I've met at the Houston Roughnecks meet and greets, everybody from the fans to the people that work for the franchise are awesome. I have a good group of friends that I've met at these events that now I know who I'm gonna be tailgating with this February. Um, but you know, kind of looking at the future of the channel, where are we going? What are the plans? Things are you know, clearly gonna be a little bit different going into 2020 because we're going to have the, you know the season so there's gonna going to be different things to talk about at least during during the season so you know we're, we're definitely trying to do a few upgrades to the channel so you're probably gonna see a few changes within the next few weeks definitely by the time the kickoff occurs but we're getting a green screen so we're gonna have some fancy backgrounds here no more just plain wall with you know my media passes and things like that we're, we're upgrading we're gonna get some better lighting um, I don't know if I'm going to change the mic, but we're going to try to work on getting some better audio. We're going to be adding a lot more content to this channel. So beyond, you know, this week in the XFL, that is going to stay the same every Friday at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific. You're going to get this week in the XFL. That's not going to change, but we may also start doing some more live streams. More importantly, different types of panel shows similar to what we're doing here this Sunday on the 29th. So this is really kind of our first test on the 29th of can we make the panel show happen without any major screw ups? And I'll tell you this, there is going to be a screw up, but we have different tools in place now. We've added some things to the XFL Newsroom HQ that I think are going to make things run a little bit more smoothly. Um, all of the things like different microphones for some of the other podcasts. We have some tools here to help switch up the scenes. We're going to be bringing in that green screen. Like I said, different types of shows, more podcasts, more content, more hosts. So I don't want to talk about it yet because it hasn't been produced yet, but look forward to some new personalities here on the XFL Newsroom website and YouTube channel but we'll keep you posted as those kind of come to fruition and get built out. Um, another thing that we're probably trying to do this year is uh, Tron Hawkins from This Is The XFL Podcast may come out here to Houston. Right now at the time, we're thinking about that Seattle Dragons game. So if he's here, we'll probably do a few live streams, maybe a live This Is The XFL Podcast. Maybe we'll do some other recordings. Definitely going to do a tailgate. So, you know, look forward to that. Um, you know, different types of web content, right? So clearly we're, we're looking for folks in all of the different regions, especially if you can attend the games. I would love to have at least a few writers or contributors in each of, each of the areas where the teams are at just to write pick sheets, predictions, matchup reports, help with the power rankings, things of that nature. So if you're interested in that, you know, I'll have a link in the description or you can head over to xflnewsroom.com, click the join us button up at the top, fill out the form and I'll get back with you. But so far we we brought on, I would not, I want to say maybe 5 or 6 different writers. Um, so they're they're in the process of cranking out some new content. I mentioned power rankings, we're going to be releasing the at least our official XFL Newsroom power rankings every week, uh, probably Mondays or Tuesdays, but hopefully Mondays after after the games, just to give a quick overview of how each team is doing. Probably gonna build out a few different sections on the website, so right now we have a team section, so each team has their own page. Currently it has the schedule, the rosters, the coaching staffs, the latest news for each of those teams. But we're probably gonna build out some of those pages a little bit more 
And like I said, try to focus on getting specific, uh, con uh, sorry, getting team specific content for each of these pages as well. So again, like I said, if you're interested in joining the crew, uh, you know, click that join us button on xflnewsroom.com. We want to hear from you, you know. Uh, and I'll just tell you this, you know, I've talked, I've met a lot of people this year, a lot of great people. The XFL community is awesome. Um, we're living in a special time because we're learning and growing just as the league is. And, you know, we've, we've all had our issues. I've, you know, and I'll be completely honest and transparent with you. I don't try to hide these things. We've, we've had a few screw ups this year, but I would say the good outweighs the bad. I could be wrong. You can let me know your opinion down in the comments. If you agree or disagree, that's fine. Uh, but I'll tell you this. Uh, we're always trying to give the fans just the latest news, right? Keep everybody in the loop, kind of talking about everything that is out there in regards to the XFL. Clearly, you know, things are going to change as the season gets comes, right? Because like we mentioned, there's games and there's different things to talk about that are tangible. Uh, but leading up to this, it's there's not always a lot to talk about. So even if it's speculation, and I think we do a pretty good job of saying this is speculation in certain instances. And again, I'm not going to deny we've screwed up on a couple things this year, but we always come out and admit it. Uh, the good news is, is ever for the most part, people seem to be accepting of that. And, you know, we're going to look forward to keep bringing you the latest news going in the future. We always learn from our mistakes. The games are coming closer and we're always looking for comments or opinions. So if there's something you would like to see added to the site, maybe change something different, let us know in the comments. You can shoot me an email. There's a contact link over at XFL Newsroom. We, we like that feedback, right? Uh, moving over to the Discord. So, you know, I know I show the Discord a lot during these videos, but to me, that it's a great community there. There's a whole separate group of people that are just fun, fun people to hang out with, right? So people that have go way back, you know, from when the league was barely, you know, announced when the team names came out, things like that. So again, thank you guys for joining. You really should join that Discord. It's always just a good opportunity to, you know, talk shop with some other XFL fans or even meet some folks in your area. I know we have a lot of Battlehawks fans from St. Louis over in our Discord. So if you're from St. Louis, you'll love it. If you're not, please help us fight them. We're getting taken over by Battlehawks fans. Please help us. I can't take it anymore. But I don't want to joke anymore. I love the Battlehawks. I'm just kidding. Uh, different podcasts that we've met throughout the year, the uh, XFL STL podcast. Those dudes are great. I joined their show. Um, the folks over at a football world, they're awesome. The people, Mike Mitchell, he's a great writer, probably one of the best writers in, you know, talking about the XFL. Peter Schwartz, he uh, used to do radio for the original XFL. He does a lot of, he covers a lot of Guardians news and really just general XFL news. Uh, you know, we spoke about this last week. We're starting to see XFL players joining, uh, you know, social media, but more importantly, YouTube, right? So we have Kyle Q TV. We have Marquette King now. Uh, you know, we're getting to the exciting point. But, you know, I know I'm kind of rambling here. It's the end of the year. It's a time for reflection. Um, I just really, again, just want to say thanks for sticking with us. And, uh, Let's, you know, we're, we're really getting to the fun point here. 2020 is, you know, knocking on the door right now. February is just a little bit over a month away. We have our first live panel show this Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, live on YouTube with Jay Dash of the XFL Unhinged podcast, Tron Hawkins of This is the XFL podcast, and the XFL delivery guy who's making his first appearance on this channel. And, you know, I would also look forward to seeing some picks. Let him see his, deliver his picks throughout the season as well. Um, but like I said, I know I'm just rambling at this point, but thanks for joining us. Thanks for sticking with us. 
We're gonna make 2020 awesome. We're gonna make the XFL awesome. We're gonna make the XFL community awesome. It's gonna be a good time and sign you up. But before we let you go, we wanna let you know, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. Give us a follow at XFL Newsroom for all the latest news. And since we're on YouTube, drop a like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to see when we're dropping new videos. Some are gonna be live and some are gonna be pre-recorded just like this one. So until next time, ooh, sign you up.